Hi guys, it's Erin the Tacky Painter here and today we're going to paint this green T-Rex. So today I'm going to be painting with Liquitex Basics acrylic paints in the colors white, phthalo blue, phthalo green, naphtha crimson, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and Mars black. But really you can use any blue, green, red, or yellow, or brown that you have. I'll also be using a sea sponge to get some of the texture and a detail brush which is basically just a small brush and a bright brush or you can use any larger brush that you have. So before you get started, if you've never used acrylic paint before, um, don't worry we're going to go over every step so you can be successful in painting this for yourself. Um, one thing that you should know about acrylic paint though is that it's all about the layers. I did not realize this when I first started painting. I thought you could just put down one layer and it would be done and it would look great, but that's not how it works. And we're not going to get it done in just one layer, so um, be ready to hang in there. We have to do what's called an underpainting first and then add more layers on top of that. So basically we're going to block in our dark areas, like underneath the jaw, underneath the teeth, and the eye socket, and then we're going to block in our lighter areas where the light would hit up on his head, up front here, and right here especially. Um, I want to mention that there is a traceable for this, and I put it on my website, which a link should be in the description below the video. Um, but you can draw him in. I think he's fairly easy to draw in, and I'll show you how to draw him in today. So to draw him in, I'm going to use what's called watercolor pencils. These are water soluble pencils, which means when you paint over them, they will blend into the paint. If you were to just use a regular pencil, um, the paint wouldn't cover it. So you'd be able to see the lines even after you're done painting. And we don't really want that. That's not the technique we're going for. Okay, so let me move him. And I've already got him sketched in here. I'm just going to make the lines a little bit darker so you can see him and so you can kind of follow along if you want to draw him in for yourself. So I started over here, hopefully you'll be able to see it. There's his neck and the ridges on his head. Over like that. Um, this is an 8x10 canvas sheet. It's not a stretched canvas board or anything like that. I just find that these are more economical um, and they don't take up a lot of space. When you have a lot of paintings that you've done, you need to think about space saving. Drawing his eye. They've got small little eyes, so you don't want to make it too big. They've also got a ridge here, a nostril, and some ridges here behind his eye. These will help us when we're putting in our colors. Uh, you might be able to hear my children. There's three of them up there. One sleeping, hopefully. There's his jawline. And his neck. Oh, let me move it up. Um, I don't want to draw on the teeth right now because it'd be really hard to paint around them. So we'll worry about those later. But there he is. It's pretty simple. He's looking kind of cartoonish right now, but that's okay. So before we actually start to block in our colors, I want to show you guys, I've got two things of water here, just plain old water, and I'm going to use those to dip my brush in to start. Can you see? There you go. And then I'm going to wipe off the excess water on a rag, and then the brushes are ready to go. Anytime you want to switch a color, it's important to rinse off in water and then wipe your brush off on a rag. I'm just using an old pair of pants that I don't use anymore. So we're gonna start with our darkest color. Here's my palette. Ooh, can't really see. All right, we're gonna use some phthalo blue right here, phthalo green, and some ooh, burnt sienna. We're gonna mix them all together. We want it to be mostly green, so we're gonna use more green than blue, and then add in a little bit of burnt sienna to get a dark green color. See there? Okay. 
now that we've got that we can put that in our darkest spots which are going to be right here around the eyes underneath the teeth and in the jaw so we'll start here hopefully you guys can see there we go like I said this is my very very first tutorial so I'm still learning and this does not have to be perfect this is our underpainting so don't worry about brush direction don't worry about oh you can still see the canvas under it it doesn't matter acrylic paints are great in that you just keep adding layers and the more layers you add the better it looks that's been my experience at least and we'll fade it in and, and work with it more but we just want to block in the colors to start and this is where our darkest colors are going we'll just paint right over the eye because we'll put that back in later I'm not even worried about it get more paint when you see that it's starting to show the texture of the canvas underneath you just grab more paint and then keep going also you may need to dip into your water that helps the paint glide on the canvas more if the paint's a little bit wet there we go look where else we might need some dark color here and the ridges are darker make some more of that pink color using thalo blue thalo green and burnt sienna to mix our dark green color and just fill it in now this might not be easy but it is simple and there's a difference color back here all right I think those are our dark colors and we might need some above the jaw too and if you don't want to lose the line just leave a little space right here so you remember where the line is for his mouth and we're gonna go over this a few times with different layers and the sponge layer is really fun so hopefully you have a sponge and can use it with me all right I think that's that with our medium shade for our underpainting I'm gonna take some green and add just a little dab of red to it to dull it because green and red are complements and a lot of yellow a little bit more green and we're making our medium shade for our underpainting now remember we still have a few layers to go so don't worry too much about what this looks like all acrylic paintings go through what's called an ugly stage where they don't really look like much of anything but you just need to hang in there and do more layers and they'll look better and better the more layers you do. While we're painting, I want to remind you guys not to worry if your painting doesn't end up looking exactly like mine. We're not all copy machines. Yours isn't going to look exactly like mine because you're not me. We're all different and our paintings are going to be different too and that's okay. Don't feel like yours is a failure just because it doesn't look like the reference photo. It's not really even about what it ends up looking like. It's about did you have fun painting it? Did you learn something? That's what's more important than the final product. I know it doesn't feel like that sometimes, but... Alright, I've taken a little more yellow ochre now. See how it's lighter? That's a little more yellow in the mix. And I've lightened it up on his nose. You don't have to be too careful around the nostril. We'll paint that in with black later. Just try to relax and remember to breathe. Try to have fun. Remember, you can use any brush that you have. Um, my brush is actually called a black pearl made by Silver Brush. 
and it's a bright. That just means um, the bristles are straight, as opposed to a filbert where they would be rounded. I'm just having fun filling in the medium green shade. Once the paint gets up on the bristle that far, it's important to rinse it out so that the paint doesn't get into what's called the ferrule or the metal part because then the bristles will start to splay and spread out and your brush won't work as well. So I rinsed mine out and wiped it off and now I'm grabbing some more paint and finishing up the underpainting. And don't worry if I'm if I seem to be painting too fast. Don't be afraid to hit the pause button. Then you can catch up. Don't be stressed about anything when you're painting. It's supposed to be relaxing and fun. I wanted to mention if you're using different colors or paints. Um, you're going to have a different result. It doesn't mean it's not right. It's just different So just be prepared for that You can use craft paints, which are those paints that you can get at Walmart or You can use student paints, which you could get at any craft store. I'm using student grade paints. They're Liquitex basics and Then there's one more step up in paints, which are called professional paints. Um, they're a little more expensive so I would stick to um, the student paints just to save some money. We're almost done filling him in with their medium color. You can see I've made some sections lighter just by using more yellow. Like up on his nose and in between the darker ridges. And right here especially, I've used more yellow ochre on his neck. And we're almost done with our underpainting. And this right here would be what's called the ugly stage. Doesn't look much like a T-Rex, except in shape. So don't get discouraged when your painting's in the ugly stage. You just have to keep going. And there, the underpainting is done. So next I've got my sea sponge. You can get these in a pack for like five bucks on Amazon. I'm using yellow ochre, swirling it around, and I'm gonna get some white on there too. It's important to swirl it so that you don't get just a spot of one color, because when you're stamping, um, that will be too harsh. So I've just got a mix of light green. I've added a lot of yellow to the green. I'm just dabbing up on top. Make sure to move the sponge all around so you don't get uniform dabs, I guess would be the technical term. This is kind of the fun part. Just stamping and then when I need more color, I'm going back to that same light green color. And this is giving his skin a textured look. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I just feel like it was easier than using the brush to make all those dabs. So going back, getting more color, a lot more white this time, a little more green, and some more yellow. A little dab of red to dull the green just a little bit. And now dab it on his nose a little bit darker green than what we were just using. Don't worry if you go outside the lines because we're going to come back with our background color and that'll cover that right up. 
Yeah, stabbing. This would be really fun for kids to do this part because you don't have to worry about them staying in the lines or anything because you're going to go back over it anyway. Zoom in a little bit. No, well, maybe not. Bear with me, guys. This is my first video ever. I'm still learning. So we're taking some brown, swirling it around on our sponge, more green, and we've got a darker color now. We're going to use that right there in that dark patch on his face, right around his eye. Underneath where his teeth are going, we need a darker shadow, because there would be one there. Grab more paint when you need it. A lot more yellow and white. Swirl it. A little bit of brown. Don't forget to have fun. Don't forget to breathe. A lot of times we want to hold our breath because we're nervous that we'll make a mistake, but you can't really make a mistake using acrylic paints because you can just paint over it when it dries. That's an important tip also. Every layer you need to let dry before you put another layer on top or else the paint underneath will lift off and we don't want that. So we've got a lighter color going along his jaw. And then the light spot on his face. Up on top of his head where the light would be touching. Just stabbing and breathing and having fun. Getting a little more brown on the sponge. And some blue this time. This will really darken it. And we'll take that color and go in the dark spot on his face. Just adding more texture each time we stamp. On his jaw. And you can go over where you stamped already. It'll just add more texture and more layers and it'll look better and better. Getting a little bit more of that color. Going underneath his jaw with a dark color because there would be a shadow there. Getting a little, more, a little bit of white this time, a dab of red, and making sure to swirl them together. Mix them really well on the sponge. And we'll go on his jaw with this sort of lime green color. Notice how I'm not really rinsing off the sponge, because I want the pigment from the previous colors to still be there. Now I'm just touching up, going over any places that I might have missed. Making sure to cover up our underpainting with this next layer of stamped paint. Getting white and yellow, mixing them really well. And doing a little bit of lighter color on his neck. Now he's got that textured look on his skin. And I've gone outside the lines, but I'm not worried about it. 
because I'm going to be painting the background. You kind of want to go outside the line so you get that stamp texture all the way to the edge. Now I'm switching to a bright brush, dipping it in the water just to get it wet, get the bristles ready to work, wiping it off. And now I'm taking just a little bit of black paint because I'm going to paint his nostril. I'm just filling that right in. I'm also going to outline his mouth. This is what we're going to use to put in our teeth. We're going to put them right on this line. There. I'm also going to paint in what will be what will be his eye. starting to come to life a little bit. Rinsing off the brush really well. Wiping it off on the rag. Every time you rinse, you should get in the habit of wiping it off so that you don't get water drips. We wouldn't want that. Now I'm getting an even smaller, tiny, tiny bright. And I'm going to use this to do the teeth. Getting a lot of white, mixing it in with my yellow, yellow ochre. I don't want the teeth to be bright white right away. Oh, just kidding. I'm doing the ridges on his face. Just some scaly bits. Starting with a darker color. And then I'll go over it again with a lighter color, just like I'll do when I paint in the teeth. Now I'm getting more white, adding it to the yellow. Same color. And we're going to paint in little dots here on his chin. Just to show more texture, just another layer. In acrylic paint, I feel like the more layers, the more finished look it's going to have. Don't forget to always look at your reference photo. It's important to have that next to you so you know what you're going to paint. Just a few spots on his mouth. Oh, messed up there, but that's okay. Just wipes right off when it's wet. Some reflected light here in the dark spot on his face. And some right here on the side of his face. Just this light color of white and yellow ochre. So I'm right above the nostril, because light would hit there, because there would be a little raised bit. And I'm rinsing off, and wiping. Next, let's just get some brown and a little bit of black. This is going to make like a burnt umber, dark brown color. And a little bit of blue, that's going to darken it even more. We're going to do some dark dots now. Right there on his forehead, around his eye. When acrylic painting, you gotta remember wherever there's a dark, there's a light. Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So we already did our light dots. Now we're doing our dark dots. So I'm right under where his teeth would be. I'm 
and have fun with this too. Be relaxed with this too. Don't worry about it too much. Because like I said, once acrylic paint dries, you can paint right over it if you don't like it. You can paint over this whole painting if you don't like it. But I think you're going to like it. I hope you're going to like it. Some dark dots above and below his mouth line. And remember to pause. If I'm going too fast, just pause. I won't be upset. I won't even know. Rinsing it off really well. And wiping. Getting all the excess water off. Right now, I'm getting more brown. I'm mixing it in. And putting that dark brown color on the dark ridges. So it's pretty simple so far, pretty straightforward. You don't have to do it exactly like me. If you think of a better way to do it, do it that way. I will never know. But I do want you guys to find me on social media and to show me your paintings because I would really, really love to see them. Just be sure to tag the Tacky Painter and I'll find them. Printing off. Wiping off. Now we're going to put a lighter color on the ridges on his nose. So I'm getting a lot of white this time. So it's a lighter color going on top. I'm not trying to cover up the layer underneath, not trying to cover up all of it. I want some of that to show through because that's showing depth. So I painted that next lighter color on and let some of the yellow ochre show through underneath. Now I think we're going to finally paint his teeth, which is the favorite part of mine. The teeth and the eye really make him come to life. So I'm getting that yellow and white color out of a smidge of black. And now we'll use that color to paint in the teeth. You can switch brushes to a smaller brush if that would be helpful. We're just going to paint little triangles. You don't even have to give him teeth if you don't want to. Maybe he's seen better days. Try not to make them all the same size. You can have some shorter ones, some longer ones if you want. So, you know, this painting doesn't even match my reference photo exactly because like I said, we're not copy machines. Every time you paint something, it's going to be a little bit different. And that's okay. Now that's my first layer of paint for the teeth. I'm going to come back over with a little bit lighter color. And we're almost done with him. All right, I want to show you, I have a little spray bottle. It was empty. It doesn't have conditioner in it anymore. It's just water. And I'm misting my palette because acrylic paint, the great thing about it, it dries really quick, but that's not so great when you still want to use it. Because after it's dry, you can't really paint with it anymore. So I like to mist my palette just to keep my paint nice and wet. Now we're going to do his eye. I'm going to get some brown and some red and mix them together really well. That's going to be his base eye color, his iris, I guess that would be. And I'm just going to paint a circle right inside that black area, I'm not covering up all the black, just a reddish brown circle right there. You want to let it dry a little bit before you put the next color on. So, we'll move on to the next layer of color on the teeth while the eyeball is drying. Because in acrylic paint, you want to let the bottom layer dry before you try to paint over it. So here's the next layer on the teeth. I'm just 
putting it to the right side because I'm assuming the light source is on the right. I'm not covering up the whole thing. Looks like he's got some broken teeth there and that's perfectly fine. Now the teeth are pretty much done. Back to the eye because that's drying off. I'm using a little tiny, this is called a detail brush. It's tiny, tiny. Because I'm going to paint the pupil. I'm just getting black. Just straight black. To paint a little tiny circle right in the middle of the eye. Now I'll put some more color on the iris of the eye. I'm just going to get a little yellow ochre, yellow color. Put that right on the bottom. And remember, if you get outside the lines, you can leave it or you can let it dry and paint over it. I'm going to give it a little brown so I can mix that yellow in, blend it a little bit. Just on the sides right there. Right there. And the final touch on the eye, I'm going to get white, do a reflective dot right there, and I think I'll do another one, smaller one, right behind it. There, now his eye is alive. And that's all of the eye. Okay, now I'm getting a bigger bright brush, dip it in the water, get it ready. Wipe it off on the rag, and we're just going to get a little tiny bit of blue and mostly white. And that's what we're going to use to paint our background. Big scoop of white, mix them together really well to get a light blue color. And this is where we're going to fix our mistakes where we went outside the line. Because there's a lot of white, it will cover really well. So it will cover over the spots where we went outside the line. Sort of making sure my brush strokes are horizontal. You don't have to do that, but I wanted to. You could use a bigger brush than this to get it done faster. I just wanted to have a little bit of control while I was going around the edges. Take as much time as you need to do this. Don't feel rushed. Just make sure you're painting it in a light blue color. You can really paint it in any color that you want. I'm suggesting here the sky in the background. Feel free to flip the canvas around any way that's easy for you to paint. Going around the edge, just covering up where we went outside the lines. And if one layer for you doesn't do it, do another layer. Getting more paint on the brush. See how it's sort of clumped up there? Got a lot of paint. Just wiped it off and then reloaded. Now, if you're working on a bigger canvas, it's going to take you longer to paint and it's going to take more paint to cover it. So just keep that in mind. This, like I said, is an 8x10 canvas sheet. So I hope you guys had fun. I hope you were relaxed. I hope you remembered to breathe. That's always important. 
and I hope you might have learned a little something. Here's our T-Rex. There he is. I like him. Not sure what we'll name him. I'll let the kids name him. My son will probably claim this for his room. Um, I just want to thank you guys. I want to remind you guys that there's always something to look forward to. Okay? And I look forward to painting with you guys next time. Bye-bye.